Hey there folks, Tim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy and community. In today's how-to workshop, I'm gonna share with you how to build your eLearning and instructional design portfolio all in Google Sites. So stick around. Hey there folks, thank you so much for tuning in to today's how-to workshop where we're gonna be taking a look at how to build your e-learning or instructional design portfolio completely in Google Sites. Now, if this is your first time watching one of my how-to workshops, these are meant to be practical and in-depth sessions where we take a look at all things e-learning and instructional design and articulate storyline and visual design and of course today, uh, portfolios specifically in Google Sites. Now, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and that bell button below so that you'll get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, make sure to join us inside the eLearning Designers community. It's completely free and it's a great place to connect, learn, and network with others who are also looking to grow their e-learning and instructional design careers. So let's get into it. How to build your e-learning instructional design portfolio in Google Sites. So, you know, if you're like a lot of people out there who are either trying to transition into this industry, maybe you're recently on the job market, maybe you're trying to find a new job, or maybe you're wanting to make the transition into freelancing, whatever the situation might be, you're gonna need a portfolio, uh, some place to showcase and share your samples of work uh, to potential hiring managers and clients. And there's so many different options out there for picking the right website uh, for building your online portfolio. And some of them are easier than others. And for a lot of people, if you've never built a website before, you might be hesitant. Uh, you might hesitate wanting to invest money in a website building tool, uh, especially if you're not sure whether or not that tool is going to work for you, whether or not it'll be easy, and and whether or not you'll be happy with whatever portfolio you might create with it. And this is where I think Google Sites offers a really great option. The great thing about Google Sites is, besides the fact that it's super easy to use, as you'll see, it's also completely free, which makes it a really great place to create your very first portfolio, or at the very minimum, it's a great place to learn more about web design and how websites are structured, so that even if later on you decide to build your website in a more advanced tool, whether it's something like Squarespace or WordPress or Webflow or whatever the case might be, you'll have a good baseline of understanding, you know, how a website is built, right? And you're gonna find out that Google Sites is super, super, super easy and approachable. Now, I do wanna say this before we jump in. Uh, when we talk about portfolios, I think sometimes people get a little confused about what we're talking about, right? Uh, having a portfolio is not about necessarily having a website. A portfolio is a collection of work, right? And having a portfolio website is a website. The website, the thing that we're gonna to build today, is simply the delivery medium for you sharing your samples of work. And so a lot of times I think people get so obsessed about wanting to build a website, especially people who are trying to transition into this industry, that they forget that at the end of the day, you have to have something to share and show on your portfolio website. And so wherever you happen to be, if you happen to uh, be wanting to transition into this industry, maybe you're currently still working to build your skills, don't start building a website until you have something tangible to share on that website, right? Build your skills, build your samples of work, then build a portfolio. Because here's the thing, at the end of the day, hiring managers and clients, they don't care about the website. They care about what's on the website, your samples of work, all right? So your portfolio doesn't necessarily have to be a website. It could be a, something as simple as a PDF document with some links to samples of work. Uh, I've My very, very, very first portfolio used to be a printed document that I printed and designed in PowerPoint and then bound together. My point is it's not about the delivery medium necessarily, it's more about the samples of work. So I always like to give that quick asterisk before we jump in and talk about building a portfolio website. You have to have samples of work first. So if you don't have that, go do that first and then come back and, and learn how to bring it together into an actual website. Okay, 
So before we jump in, learning about how to use Google Sites, I wanna show you some examples of some portfolios that I've helped people with over the years that were also built in Google Sites that you can check out, and they're really great examples. So let's jump in here. This first one here that I wanna show you is from an instructional designer named Sarah Anderson. Uh, I worked with her earlier this year, and I think a little bit last year, uh, as she worked to transition to e-learning and instructional design, and now she works as an instructional designer. And this is a really great example of a simple website that she put together in Google Sites, right? It's clearly her, Sarah Anderson, and this is her portfolio, right? We have a great picture of her here, and she has all of her samples of work here that she's worked on uh, to, to grow her portfolio, right? Uh, and you can see she has different categories of materials. So we have e-learning and some video stuff and then some other learning materials. Again, simple, 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 not too complex. Another great example is Lindsay uh, Restmeyer. She's also uh, an instructional designer. And what I love about this example, and especially the next example, is that it demonstrates the variety that you can create with Google Sites. I think a lot of times, you know, if you've ever played with Google Sites before, Google Sites used to be so awful. And it's improved over the years, and you can create really unique and different looking websites depending on what graphics you use and what fonts you use. And you can see, um, you know, she's focused more on the imagery of her uh, portfolio samples. And of course, we can click into it to learn a little bit more. This next example, Zenab. Zenab's an instructional designer and learning experience designer in the Middle East, um, in Egypt, but I, I know she's going to be moving soon. And uh, she's built her portfolio um, in Google Sites as well. And what I love about this example is she actually went on Canva and created these uh, these animated backgrounds. I think they're just animated GIFs and used that as the background to create this really unique uh, look and feel. And if you didn't know uh, you know, if you, if there wasn't a way for you to identify it was a Google Sites website, you wouldn't know it was Google Sites. That's what I love about it is it's, it's, it's a really unique looking, uh, website with the animated graphics that she's used here. And then this final one I'll show you is from Ayla Blacklaw. Ayla is another instructional designer. And uh, this is another great example of the variety you can create visually uh, with uh, something in Google Sites. And so you can see her front page is actually access her portfolio. And she has this great looking logo here. And she's used some simple colors. And it, it, it doesn't have to be complex in order to be effective, as you'll see as we get into this. So that's a really great example. So I'll reference some of this uh, as we um, you know work through building our portfolio in Google Sites. So today what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build a, uh, we're going to build a portfolio from scratch in Google Sites. And I'm actually going to build a fake portfolio for a fake instructional designer that I've made up. Her name is Sarah Jensen, I think, or Johnson. I can't remember the name I gave her. We'll figure it out once we get into it. Um, and I've created some samples that we're going to put in there. So we're going to create a, a sample portfolio from beginning to end using this fake person that I've made up. So here we are in Google Sites. And when you first come to Google Sites, this is what you see. This is where we can create our blank website. And you can create a blank one or you can pick from several of these different templates. Now, personally, you know, the templates can be a good springboard, but I, I usually don't recommend using the templates because uh, a lot of people use these templates and you're going to create a portfolio that looks like everyone else's portfolio. And nobody really wants to see that. And so if you do come in and start playing around with Google Sites, at the very minimum, I would encourage you to play around with the templates only so that you can understand a little bit more of how Google Sites works. It's a great way to start playing with a pre-built uh, website so you can understand all of the different components and elements that make up a website. But once you've kind of figured out how it works and functions, then go create your own custom website with your own colors, your own fonts, so that you can create something unique. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to jump back to my main Google Sites page. And I don't need this one, so I'm going to delete that. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a blank website here. So I'll click on that. It's going to bring us here to our blank Google Sites page. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name my website. And so who is the name of our fake instructional designer? Sarah James. I, well, I called her Sarah Jensen. So Sarah James is going to be our hypothetical instructional designer. She was a former teacher, and now she's moving into e-learning and instructional design. And so she's working on building her portfolio, right? Uh, and I've written all this copy here, uh, and I kind of effectively storyboarded out all the content I want to have on my portfolio or on Sarah's portfolio. And this is actually 
actually another thing that I recommend that you do is take some time to write out the words that you want to present, not only for your homepage and telling people about you, but also your portfolio pages. And what I'll do is down in the description, I'll put a link to where you can kind of download this, um, I don't know what to call it, like a storyboard for copywriting, copy editing, writing out the content for your own portfolio. Now, here's what I'll say, you know, use this as a springboard, change out the words, make it your own. Don't copy it, make it, use exactly what I've written here because somebody will do that and then somebody else will do it and then everybody else will have the same thing. So, you know, I'll make this available, but use it as a guide to write your own stuff. Tell people your own story, all right? So let me jump back to my Google Sites page here and we're gonna type in our the name of our website here, Sarah James is e-learning and instructional design portfolio, right? It can be as long as that. And you're going to see it's going to put it up here as the text here. I don't want that. I don't want it to say Sarah James e-learning and instructional design portfolio. That's too long. So I'm just going to delete it. I'm not even going to put a site name up there. Eventually, I'm going to add a logo there uh, in its place. Now, uh, there's a couple things that we need to do here when designing um, the front of our website, the front page of our website. One of the things I always tell people is you wanna think about, you know, when somebody comes to your website, it's kind of like the storefront for your digital brand or you as a professional. And so you need to think about it from the eyes of somebody other than you. You need to think about it from a potential hiring manager standpoint or a client standpoint or whatever the case might be. And so there's a couple of priorities that I think are super important when you're designing the front page of your website and the things that people see when they first come to your website. The first thing that we're going to spend time working on is telling people who we are and what it is that we do. Those two things are super, super important. The big mistake a lot of people make, uh, for example, right here on the very top in the, the banner section of their website, is they'll say something like, welcome to my online portfolio. Let me tell you what's wrong with that. If I'm a hiring manager and I go to your website and it says, welcome to my online portfolio, I'm thinking, who's my, who is, who's saying this to me, right? And then portfolio, yeah, it's obvious. I know it's your portfolio, right? And so you need to think sort of like a marketer when writing the copy of your portfolio. So we're gonna say, hi, I'm Sarah James. We're gonna tell you who I am. Hi, I'm Sarah James. Of course, I'm not Sarah James. This person's Sarah James. And then we want to tell people what it is that we do. Well, what is it that we do? Well, we are an instructional designer, learning experience designer, an e-learning designer. What is it that we do? Well, if I go down to my little document here, uh, here's what I've written for the hero section. Hi, I'm Sarah James. I design learning experiences that people love. As simple as that, right? It could be anything you want it to be. I'll go give you another example. I'll go to my portfolio here. Uh, mine is, I help people design beautiful e-learning. It, it's that one sentence thing that describes what it is that you do. So let's jump back to Google Sites here. I'm going to minimize this. And I'm going to add a text box here. And we're going to say, what does we say? I design learning experiences that people love. Perfect. So we're going to type that there. I design learning experiences that people love. Not live, love. All right. And I'm going to move that. You can see it's down here. I don't want it down there. So I'm going to move it right up here underneath that heading. And we'll center it and we'll make it look prettier here in a moment. Okay, so those are the first two big priorities when designing our home page, the front page, telling people who we are, Sarah James, what do we do? Design learning experiences that people love, right? Now, the third thing that you need to accomplish with the banner section, or it's also sometimes called as the hero section, this whole thing at the top of the screen, the hero section is what it's called. The third thing that you need to accomplish with that is establishing the look and feel for the whole website. This is going to include the colors, the fonts, imagery, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we could design all of that from scratch here uh, and edit it here, but one of the things we're gonna do is you'll notice here on our sidebar here on the right in Google Sites, this is where we can insert different elements. You're gonna learn more about that as I insert different stuff. We can add pages, and then over here we have the option for themes. And this is where we can start establishing a look and feel for our portfolio website. And there's several built-in themes, and these are all you know totally fine. Play with them, see how they look, see if there's something in here that you 
you like, but again, the chances are many other people have used these and you don't want to create a portfolio that just looks like everyone else's portfolio. You want to create your own unique portfolio. And this is great because you can change the fonts and the colors and create, you know, something that's relatively uh, unique. But what we're going to do today is we're actually going to create our own custom theme for Sarah's portfolio here. So up here at the top of our theme tab here, we have the option to create a theme. And we're actually going to spend quite a bit of time creating this theme. And the reason why is the more more time I spend um, establishing the look and feel, the easier it's going to make building out the rest of this because now we're just rinsing and repeating once we've established the colors and the fonts and all of that good stuff. So let's create a new theme and it's going to walk us through what we need to do. So let's give it a name. We're going to call it Sarah James Theme. And we can add a logo and a banner image. The logo is obviously the logo. The banner image is what's going to show up back here behind where it says, Hi, I'm Sarah James. It's going to be that consistent hero image is sometimes is what it's called or banner image. And I have a lot of different thoughts and options for you on either creating your own banner image or where you can um, uh, download some. All right, so let's add a logo first. I'm going to click here to add a logo. I'm going to upload a logo. And I've already created a whole bunch of assets for Sarah James. I've created the banner images, the logos, photos, portfolio, and I'll be using these throughout. Obviously, you don't want to create your own logo and banner images, and I'll show you how I did all that for, for this one. So let's upload a logo, and I'm going to do, here's our Sarah James simple, simple, simple logo. I'll talk more about logos here in a moment. I'll open that up there. And then what about the banner image? What do we want to have for the background? Well, I created a whole bunch of different ones. So let's go back here to the banners. I created some graphical ones and some image ones, and I'll talk about both of these here in a moment. Uh, the image ones are simple. They're like yellow with a little bit of an image behind each one to give it some personality. Um, or we created these graphics ones. I have some interesting graphic ones that look like this that I created. So I'm going to go ahead and go with, I think I'm going to go with this one here and add that for my theme and it'll update it here in a moment so we gave it a name we uploaded the logo we added a banner image i'll come back to those and show you about how i created those in a moment let's click next now we need to choose a color scheme now if you're like me i'm awful at picking colors um but uh, I did have that cool yellow color in the logo, and so I think I'm going to stick with a yellow looking theme, and I kind of like this one here. I could create a custom one, but that would be more work than what I'm capable of. I'm awful at creating my own custom color themes. So I'm going to just choose this one here, and we'll click next. And then next we have font selections. Now. I did a whole separate how-to workshop on choosing fonts and colors, and I'll link to that up above or down below. Um, but I'll give you my quick elevator pitch on designing with fonts. Uh, you'll notice here it has two sections, titles and headings, and then body text. And the general rule of thumb when you're, when you're working with fonts is you want to pick contrasting fonts. So typically with something like titles and headings, you want to do something that's a little bit more stylized. And then with body fonts, you want to choose something that's going to be easily legible, easy to read, uh, and not too creative. You never want to sacrifice uh, readability for style. So for the titles and headings, I'm going to do something a little bit more creative. This is where we can get more um, uh, uh, experimental with our different fonts. You know, there's some fun ones in here. Play around with them. I'm going to go with something that's simple and clean. There's lately, there's been this trend going back to serif fonts where um, you think of like Times New Roman, but there's like these more modern ones. So there's this Playfair display. I like that. I'm going to just do a semi-bold version of that. That'll be for titles and headings. And then for body content, uh, and this is where we want to do something simple and easy to read. Uh, so, you know, like an Open Sans or a Roboto is good. I like Roboto Lite. Uh, it's a simple, clean font, as you'll see here. All right, so we set up all those settings. Now we're going to click Create Theme, and Google Sites is going to create our theme. And you'll see that it automatically did a bunch of stuff. It added our banner image. It changed our fonts. All of that good stuff. But of course, we, we can still customize it. And there's some things that we still need to customize, right? I, I, I would like there to be some color up here. Uh, and I don't want the background here to be black. Uh, and we can adjust all of that. We can customize all that. So we edited the theme. Now we're going to move down here to colors. This is where we can start customizing all the different colors that we use. And this is where we're going to just make some simple, simple, simple changes. We're not going to do too much. Um, the default color, this is kind of like the, the main brand color, if you will, which is that yellow color. So I'm going to stick with that. 
I don't need to worry about any of these style stuff. I'm not going to worry about that. But for the background here, I don't want the background of my website to be black. That's too dark for this website. Um, I'm kind of going with just a light, airy theme. So I'm going to make it a white background. Keep it simple. Uh, it looks like off-white. I'm going to make it white, white. There we go. Titles and headings. Um, this is where I'm going to change some of that. So for titles, that would be this. I want that to be yellow as well. Um, and then headings, I don't want it to be that off white. So I'm going to make that this off black color. There's, I don't know why it is, but there's something about choosing something that's like a really dark gray. It's not exactly black. It's not exactly light gray. It's just really dark gray. It's just easier on the eyes. So I'm just going to choose the second one in here for that. Same thing with the normal text and small text, change that. And uh, again, you can spend a lot of time customizing these and you can go back and change it later. You know, it's not set in stone what we've done here. All right. So those are some of those color changes. Let's go to text here. Do we need to change anything there? I don't think so. We already set up our title and subtitles and our headings. We're good there. Images, do we need to do anything there? No, we added our header. I'm going to play around with the header a little bit because I have some thoughts there. Adjust for readability. This setting automatically adjusts the opacity of the image if there's issues with readability. In this case, there's no issues with readability, so it's not going to have to do that. Anchoring, I'll talk a little bit about that. We had uploaded our logo. We didn't upload our favicon. Let's talk about what that is. Um, you know, all websites, let me open up a tab here. If you look at this uh, series of tabs up here, you'll notice up here on each of these tabs, there's the little logo right here, right? There's my little Tim Slade logo, there's Ayla's logos, there's Zenav's logos, et cetera, et cetera. These are what's known as favicons. And uh, you can upload your logo and it will be the little tiny, tiny logo that people see up there. You wanna do that so it, it looks like a real legit website. Uh, and so I'm just gonna upload a secondary version of uh, my logo here. Otherwise, if I didn't do that, you would have this like purple Google site square and we don't like that. So I'm gonna upload the same logo I did for the favicon. Let's go find that here. Logo. We have a yellow version of the logo. We have a white version of the logo. I'm going to use that a little bit later here, uh, but we'll upload this now. So we'll add that there. Okay, cool. So we just did the text. Now let's go to navigation. This is where we can adjust how the menu will look um, as we start adding different items to the menu. Right now we don't have anything in the menu, but you'll notice as I hover over here, you can see this area is highlighted. That's the top bar navigation. That's where our menu will eventually be. And we can control what that looks like depending on how the learner scrolls and interacts with it. So right now, if I were to scroll down, which I can't right now because there's nowhere to scroll to, it would change the background of it to black. Um, and I can also make it transparent. So if I turn this off, you'll see that's what it looks like. Is that what I want it to look like? Hmm, no. Uh, what if we wanted to look like our brand color? Well, I'll make it that yellow color there. I like that. Good. Um, and then this part here, this controls how the text will look when it's selected. It'll be bold. I don't need to change anything there. Okay. Components. What's that? Okay, components, a weird name for components. This is where we can adjust the look and feel of our buttons, specifically with the color, right? So that we can change the filled button, the outline button, text button, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, I'm just gonna make a couple of quick changes to these colors, because these ones are all really light, so that doesn't work for me. And I could make them the yellow color, but I'd love to introduce a secondary color. And you'll notice I kind of have this red color here that I used in the graphic of my banner. Again, I'll show you how I created that here in a moment. So I'm going to choose, I could go find the actual color for it, but I'm just going to choose this red color here for the look and feel of my buttons. Same thing for an outline button, a text button. When you add buttons in Google Sites, there's all sorts of different options for styles of buttons you can add. I don't need to change anything with a divider. Do I want to change what a link would look like? Yeah, we'll make it that red color here. And an image carousel active dot? Yeah, we're going to use an image carousel later, so I'll change that to red as well. Okay. And you'll see that once we start adding buttons. Now, the final option we have down here is spacing. Um, the spacing controls how much space there is between elements as we add different sections to our portfolio. So right now it's set as comfortable. Then there's cozy and compact. We're going to keep it as comfortable, but you'll see later we'll add some spacing between our elements. So we don't need to change anything there. All right. Okay. So we've built out our theme. We adjust all these settings. Like I said before, none of this is set in stone. We can edit this 
and play around with it as needed as we build out um, this uh, portfolio. And I need to rename this. Sarah James is this theme. There we go. So we have the theme customized. Okay, so what have we accomplished so far? Well, we have uh, created our first Google site and we did some of the most important parts. So we established the look and feel, right? We did our colors and our fonts and uh, we gave it a unique look and feel. And then uh, we established who Sarah James is and what it is that Sarah James does. Or at least we told uh, people who, you know, when you come here, whose website is this? It's Sarah James's. No clear, uh, qu there's no question about that. And then what does Sarah James do? She designs learning experiences that people love. Those are some really important things that we need to, to get done. Uh, before we we continue forward. Now, there's a few things that I do want to change here. First off, you'll notice the logo up here. Um, it is the yellow on yellow. I really don't like that. So what I think I want to do is I want to upload that alternative version of the logo, the white version of the logo, which will look better on this yellow background. So I'm going to go back and edit this theme. And let's go find our images. Here's our logo. I'm going to edit that and upload a new one. I don't need to do that to the favicon because the favicon will show up here in the tab, but that looks much better. And then for this title heading, I'm gonna change that to our uh, yellow color as well because I kind of like that. So I'm gonna pause here because I wanna talk about some different options you have for the header uh, and how I created these and also the logo and how I created that because this is, uh, and the reason I'm spending so much time on this is because like I said before, this establishes the look and feel of your website and your brand. And so you want to get it right the first time. And typically, whatever you do here for this banner and this logo, those are things that are also, or at least you want to have represented on LinkedIn, right? So whatever banner you use here, maybe you're going to use that on your LinkedIn profile or whatever you type here, you probably want to use that as your headline on your LinkedIn because you're creating a brand around yourself if you're building a portfolio. So let's first talk about the logo because this is the simplest thing to talk about. The big mistake a lot of people make when designing their logo is they design something that is easy to read when it's really, really big, but then when you get it down to like this big, it's so hard to read and you can't really read it and it just looks like a scrumbling of words. A scrumbling, if that's a word. I don't even know if that's a word, but it is today, right? And so the simplest thing you can do if you need to create a logo is just use your initials and stylize your initials in some way. So let me show you an example. I'm gonna open it up here. The, the logo I created for Sarah James. And I literally created this logo completely in PowerPoint. And I don't know why it's off the screen here. I'll put it here. You can't see it because it's white right now. So I'm gonna change the color of it. And I'm just gonna set up this yellow color here. And it's just simply a yellow circle with an S and a J using our font. And I offset the font a little bit so it kind of goes off the edge to give it a unique look and feel. So, you know, do a circle with your initials and an interesting font. Do a square with your initials and an interesting font. Do a rounded rectangle with your initials and an interesting font. And that can become your logo. You don't have to get complex or convoluted with your logo. And you don't want your logo to have so many letters in it that when it gets really, really tiny, you can't read it, right? Um, and so you wanna create something simple like this. Uh, and then you can just right click and save as picture, and then you can save this off as an image that you can use. And in this instance, I'll close this. I created two versions, the yellow one like that, and the white one like that, all right? So that's how I did the logo. Now let's go back to our Google Sites here. And let's talk about the banner here, this hero image area here. Now, this banner image, I uh, I didn't create it from scratch, but I sourced the graphic here and then edited, edited it to fit my needs. And there's a lot of different options for how you can create your header. Um, you could do something like this that's a little bit more graphical. That's a bit more complex. Uh, but you can also do something as simple as an image. So, for example, if I wanted to upload a totally different image, I'll show you a couple different ones that I created um, for example, I have this image banner here. If you wanted to create something like this, like has a, it's an image with a yellow transparency over it. I could put that, of course, I would need to adjust my text here to make it legible. 
Um, but again, it's consistent with the look and feel of uh, my my brand, right? Because it has the yellow. Uh, and you'll notice here that there's this option for header type here. There's several different header types I can make. I can make it title only, which doesn't look really great. Do a banner, do a large banner, or I can do a cover one like this, right? Uh, I'm just going to leave it as large banner now, and then we'll come back to that. Let me show you how I created this, and then I'll also show you how I created. I'm actually going to do the cover here, change the image, upload a new one, and we're going to do, I created uh, this full-size banner one like this that I actually want to use. So I'm going to upload that, and let's change my font back to yellow so we can read it. And this is what I want to use for our uh, our fake portfolio here for Sarah James, right? With our yellow header up here. But let me show you how I did that. So there's a lot of different places you can get these graphics from. Uh, this particular graphic that I used, I got from Envato Elements. I use Envato Elements all the time for um, not only my own personal work, but for client work. And it's a really fantastic graphics website where you can, I think you pay like 20 bucks a month, and you can download tons and tons, as much as you want, of graphics and stock photos and uh, music and videos and all sorts of stuff. And so I downloaded this, and then I had to do some edits to it in Adobe Illustrator. But I have a separate how-to workshop if you've never used Adobe Illustrator before and you're wanting to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator. I have a separate how-to workshop on how to edit graphics just like this in Adobe Illustrator, and I'll link to that up above and, and down below. So you could come use Envato Elements to find graphics like this and edit it to fit your needs. Um, if you want to choose something that's, you know, like a photo, do a photo background, I use Pexels.com for a lot of stock photography. Pexels.com is great because it's completely free. These are images that you can use however you want. And you can see where I got some of these images. I just typed in the word office and you can find uh, an image that kind of speaks to you. Um, and here's a couple of different ones that uh, I downloaded. And what I did to make it yellow is that I actually, if I go open it here, Again, did this in PowerPoint. I have a separate how-to workshop on how to edit and create graphics in PowerPoint. I'll put that up above and down below. Uh, but all this is, is uh, I'll ungroup it, is we have a yellow shape here, <laughs> and then we have the image here, and I just set the image. If I format picture, go to my picture transparency, it's just set at 80% transparency. And so it creates that overlay to look and I could change it if I want it to be more or less opaque. Um, and then you put it over it and you could right click and save it as a picture and use that in your background. All right. So there's a lot of different options. Spend some time picking the right image or creating the right graphic. You can always change it later, but it's super important that you spend time getting that right right away. All right. So let's go back to our Google site here. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with this graphic that I sourced from Envato Elements. I made some edits to in Adobe Illustrator to create this, uh, this graphic here. And all it is is I moved some of the images to the corner, moved some to the top corner, created a big empty space. And like I said earlier, I changed the header type to be this full cover image. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment before, uh, uh, when I preview it. Now, before we move on, there's a couple of changes I want to make here. I think there's some room for this to be a little bit larger. So I'm going to change this, and instead of 34, let's go up to like 48. And let's make this a little bit larger as well. Let's go up to, hmm, oh, that's too big, 24. Oh, I spelled experiences wrong. That's fun. Hold on. Uh, 18. Nope. Oh, okay. Let's try that again. 18. There we go. Experiences are going to fix it now. Let's try this myself. Experiences? I am an awful speller. Did I get that right? You know what? I'm just going to copy it from here, from my content. Now I will know. I think it's right. There we go. OK. So we've designed the template. We've established a look and feel. We've built not the whole home page, right? But we built the hero banner section here, which is super important because that's the first thing people are going to see. It's like the storefront to your brand, right? Let's now preview what we've done so far. As you build a site in Google Sites, you build your portfolio in Google Sites, just like, you know, if you're designing something in Articulate Storyline, you want to preview early and often. So you'll notice up here in the top, there's this uh, option here to preview. So I'll click that and it'll generate a preview of the website. Now, there's nowhere for me to scroll because there's nowhere 
to go to right now. Um, but what, why this is so important is you want to make sure that your, what you've designed looks right and also is going to work on different devices. And this is the great thing. Uh, one of the improvements they've made with Google sites is that it's completely mobile responsive. So you'll notice down here, if you're familiar with rise, it's, it's exactly the same thing. I can click and it'll automatically reflow. And I can see that this is going to look great no matter what size of device somebody might be viewing it on. So that looks fantastic. And we'll come back to this as we continue building out uh, our portfolio and we'll preview it. Okay. All right, so done. The front page, at least the header section of the front page is done. Now, this is uh, the front page. This is where people start making additional mistakes with the design of their portfolio. Um, this is where we want to start telling the story of who we are and what it is that we do. And so the front page of a website is really kind of like a detailed menu of what somebody should expect throughout the rest of your website. So if you go like dissect the front page of any website, you'll notice that each section below that banner is kind of like a menu, a call to action to learn more about whatever, the portfolio, learn more about the about me or whatever the case might be. So we're going to create a couple of sections to direct the learner to learn more about who Sarah James is and then to check out some of Sarah James's work, all right? And this is where we're going to start adding additional sections down here. So let me go back here, and we're gonna to go to the Insert tab here. And uh, this is where I've been inserting different elements. We have text, images, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we also have these content blocks here. These are simple layouts that kind of give us a springboard into designing different sections. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an image on the left, text on the right, content block here. I'm going to click and add it and it puts it here. And this is where I can start adding some content. So I can add an image and some text here. Now I have some images that I've already uh, sourced of who Sarah James is. It's totally fake images. And uh, so I'm going to add this here. So I'm going to go ahead and add and upload an image. And let's go find our image of Sarah James. We have some photos here and we have Sarah James's headshot. There's Sarah James, there's Sarah James meeting, here's some Sarah James working. So let's throw in this headshot here, I like that. All right, click open and it uploads it. Now you'll notice here that it kind of cropped the image, but I can adjust that. I can make it bigger or smaller. In this case, one of the things that I did when I created these images of Sarah James, our fake person here, is I actually made them square images with rounded corners there. And I want that to be displayed on the images. And by the way, I edited those uh, completely in PowerPoint to do that. And so in this case, there's this option here to uncrop it. So if I click that, it's going to uncrop it and give us the full image. And I can see those rounded corners there. It's just a little stylistic thing to make it look a little bit more unique than it would otherwise. All right. Now, let me pause here real quickly, because you might be thinking, well, gosh, Tim, that looks great, but I don't have a headshot that looks that good, right? Well, that's probably true, right? A lot of us don't have professional photography that looks like this, that just so happens to match the branding and the colors of what I've chosen here, right? That's okay. It doesn't have to look exactly like this, but here's what I would encourage you to do. If you don't have a professional looking headshot or a series of images that I'm going to be using that ultimately will help this portfolio look fantastic. Here's what I encourage you to do. Go find your friend who has a really nice iPhone, or if you have a really nice iPhone that is a newer one with a great camera, and go out to a public library, an open office working space, somewhere where it's you know interesting and unique, and have your friend take some pictures of you. Uh, you know, get some props like these folders or your computer, and just take a bunch of pictures. And you're gonna feel totally stupid doing that, but I promise you, having some nice photography of yourself, um, it, you can use it on your portfolio. You can use it on LinkedIn, and it's a great way to put yourself out there. So, you know, there are options out there, even with just using your iPhone. Just put on portrait mode, go out, get a cool, find a cool background, a cool couch at a modern library downtown or something like that and take some photos of yourself. Like I said, you'll feel stupid, but you'll thank me later for it. I promise. Okay. All right. So we added the image there. Uh, what about the content here on the right? So this is where I'm going to reference this little, I don't know what to call it, my little storyboard uh, for all the copy that I've added here. So there's two things I want to put on my homepage here. I want a section that tells people a little bit more about who Sarah James is. 
And then a, a second one that tells a little bit about what Sarah James does, right? These are the two things people are looking for, especially hiring managers, when they go to your portfolio. Who are you? What do you do? And you'll notice that as we get deeper and deeper, we're going to get more detailed with that, right? So we started that here saying, I'm Sarah James. I design uh, e-learning ex I design experiences that people love. Then we're going to get into even a deeper level of detail about who Sarah James is. And then the next session is going to get into even more detail about what Sarah James does. And then those are going to link off to the About Me page and the Portfolio page. So it's kind of like a triangle, right? We're getting deeper and deeper, more detailed, more detailed, right? So uh, here's the subheading we're going to use here. Well, we have a heading, Who Am I? Subheading is going to say, After 10 years in front of the classroom, I decided I'd rather work behind the scenes. That's the story. And then after working as a teacher for over a decade, I know what it takes to create an engaging and effective learning experience, but effective facilitation is only half the equation. Amazing learning experiences start with how they're designed behind the scenes. And that's why I decided to make the leap into e-learning instructional design. Now, this sample portfolio I'm building, I imagined it being a teacher transitioning into e-learning instructional design because a lot of those people out there, you're probably watching, you might be a teacher. There's a lot of other teachers out there. So I thought it makes sense to position it that way. Um, you know, and if you happen to be a teacher, I just want to say this. There's a lot of bad advice out there where people try to tell you to try and hide the fact that you were a teacher or minimize the fact that you were a teacher. And I feel like taking the opposite approach. What if we embraced it? What if we told people our story that, yeah, I was a teacher and I discovered that this is what I'd rather be doing. Here's my story, right? Don't try to contrive it into being something you're not. Tell people your story because ultimately hiring managers want to see authentic people. <laughs> they want to hire authentic people. And so own it, right? So like I said, you know, if you're building your own portfolio and you need help writing it, use this as a springboard to help you figure out how to write your story or your bio or write about yourself because that's always hard and just make it your own. Okay, so let's add these sections. We have a headline, a subheading, and body content. So let's start with the, the headline here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually add a heading up here. So I'm going to add a, a text block here. I'm going to say, who am I? Question mark. I'll select this and I can change this to a heading. I don't need to pick the font or the colors. I can just do title and it's automatically going to apply those theme settings. Everything that we designed earlier with our theme, I don't need to design that from scratch. All I had to do is center it to, to make it centered. And I'm actually going to put that up over here. So that'll be the first thing they see. And then here's where we're going to put our subheading or subheadline. So after 10 years in front of the classroom, I decided I'd rather work behind the scenes. So let's put that here, paste to match style. Now, do I want this to be this big and yellow? No. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a heading like that, a subheading. There we go. And then here's our body content. So let's go back to our Word document. After working as a teacher for over a decade, blah, 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 I'll copy that. And we'll paste that in here. And there is our body content. Now this is a great example where as I'm looking at this, let's preview it real quickly. I do feel like this body content text is a little tiny. So this is where we're going to go edit our theme. Let's go do that. Theme, edit, and see if we can adjust the size of our text, right? So here's the normal size text. It's 12. So let's see what makes it bigger. See how I'm making it bigger? The great thing about doing this in the theme settings is when you do this, it's going to apply it to all of your text throughout your, your, your website. So let's make it 15. I think that looks good. And if I added a hard return, that looks good. Okay. Now let's preview it. I'm done with editing that theme. Yeah, that feels better, I think. Small changes like that. And you have to preview early and often to identify those things. Because everything we do here on our front page, we're going to be using later on. So we want to get it right here. Okay, so let's do one more thing. We're going to add a button. In this case, we're going to add a learn more about me. And this is going to be a link that will ultimately go to our about me page. So let's add a button in there. And our button is right here. I'll add a button. And we're going to say, learn more about me. You know, for whatever reason, whenever I write button, the text inside the button, I like to use all caps. I don't have an about me page yet, so I'm just going to type in the word link. We'll link to something later. And it puts it down here. I obviously don't want it down there, so I'm going to move it up here. And you can see I can move that around. And there's our call to action with that little hint of red that we selected earlier. So let's preview that. Okay, looks good. 
Okay, so we've designed one section to learn about who Sarah James is. Now, we're not going to do the next section. We're not going to create that from scratch. This is where we're going to start duplicating different elements, uh, not only to just save us time, but ensure consistency. As you establish a look and feel with your fonts and your colors and how things are laid out, you want to be consistent AF, if you know what I mean. Stay consistent. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this heading. So we did who am I? This time it's going to be, uh, what's our next one? So we just did this about section. What do I do? Okay. Question mark. And then let's duplicate this. And it doesn't have to, you can name it whatever you want. You can say, what type of work do I focus on? Or whatever the case might be. Or my work. It doesn't even have to be a question. You can make it however you want. And uh, I want to switch this around. So I don't want it to be exactly the same. So I'm actually going to move this image over here to the right there. And it'll automatically switch that. And let's choose a different image here. So I'm going to click on this, click on my little three dots here, replace image, upload a new image. And I have a couple different ones here. I have Sarah James meeting people. She's working. We're going to do Sarah James meeting here, right? And if you go take my suggestion, you go to like a library or an open office environment, take a bunch of these pictures like this, go get your friend and have them pretend like you're working like this, this stuff, you know, it, it really helps add um, you know, uh, personality to your website or your portfolio or your brand, right? Okay, let's change out the text. So uh, what does Sarah James do? So using what I learned from the classroom, I design learning experiences that people love and delivers results. All right, let's get that. Copy that. Oops. Copy that text. Go back to Google Sites. We'll paste that here as this little subheading. That works. Uh, is it deliver results? Hmm, okay, I'll leave it as is. I think it's delivers, but I might be wrong. Copy this text and we'll paste that in there. So today I use all of the skills I learned from the classroom to help organizations design and develop best in class learning experiences. Whether I'm creating an instructor led workshop, an interactive e-learning course or a simple job aid, my goal is to design learning experiences that people love and delivers results. I mean, who wouldn't want to hire this person, right? This person sounds like she knows what she's doing. Uh, what do we want for our button here? That's going to be check out my work. So let's do this. Check out my work. Again, we don't have a portfolio page yet, so we'll add that later. Click update, we'll add that. All right, let's preview it. So, hi, I'm Sarah James. Scroll down, who am I? Blah, 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 blah. That looks great with our call to action. Learn more about me, what do I do? Check out my work. That's great. Now, before we continue, uh, one of the things that I think is important when you're designing a website is that you need to have breathing room between the different elements. Right now, this feels really scrunched up to me. There's a lot going on, uh, and some of these sections feel too close. And so I'd like there to be some breathing room. And one of the nice things available here in Google Sites in our uh, different things we can insert is down here, there's an option for a spacer. So we can add spacers to create a little bit of extra space between elements. And so what I'm going to do is add some spacers. I don't know why it chose to put it there, but I'm going to add some spacers between our different headings and different elements. Now that I have one, I'm just going to duplicate it. And this is something you need to spend some time playing around with until you figure out, you know, where you need spacers and how many you want. But I'm going to at least at the very minimum put one before and after each of my headlines, and then after each of these content blocks here. Put that one down there. And let's preview it and see what it looks like. It should just feel like, you know, there's more breathing room, which is a good thing. Yeah. See, it just feels better inside our souls. Okay. So we've designed our homepage, the front page. Um, there's one more thing I want to do before we move on to add some other pages is I need to add a footer here. You know, all websites typically have a footer. Here's my uh, website here and my footer here has my name and some social media links, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so does Ayla has a simple one down here. Most websites have a simple footer and we can do that in Google sites. And the nice thing about designing a footer is that it allows you to have consistent elements that you always want present on every page at the very bottom. And so there's a couple things I want to add here. I want to add a link to 
Sarah James's social media profiles. I wanna add her logo and maybe some sort of graphic down there, all right? So if I hover down here, you'll see there's an option here to add a footer. I'm gonna add a footer. And now I'm gonna start adding different elements here. By default, it's gonna have you add text, but you don't have to, you can put whatever you want. So in this case, maybe I wanna add an image to be a logo. So I'll do an image, uh, if I can get it down there. Let's try this here. Uh, let's delete that and let's do image. We're just gonna make me upload one from here. That's okay. Let's go upload a logo. There we go. There we go. It puts it right here. And we're gonna actually put it right here in the middle. Let's see if we can make it a little bit smaller. Uh, and I don't want it to crop it. So I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so we have the logo. Let's also add some text below that that says connect with me and let's make it not small text let's make it like a headline there or heading we'll center it and then we're also going to add some social media links and uh you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna add my own social media links from the e-learning designers academy website because she's not really a real person so i'll copy my twitter here and you'll notice that as you add the links it's going to automatically generate the logos so we'll add our LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, or if you just have LinkedIn, you can just do LinkedIn. We'll add YouTube here as well. Copy link address, put those here, and let's insert them. And you'll see it automatically generates the uh, little logos there, and we can change how big they are. Maybe we'll do large ones. We can do circle or square, solid, outline. We're going to do colored, and we're going to center it here. And we'll center it right down here. That looks good. And then maybe down here across the bottom, we wanna add you know, some sort of stylized image uh, that kind of harkens back to what we did here at the top for our banner. So one of the other graphics that I created, let's do, um, let's see here. I think I can do it with a spacer. Can I add a background image to a spacer? Uh, I thought I could. No, I cannot. Let's do, Hmm. I can't remember which setting it was. Maybe it's just image. Let's try that. No, I know it's not image. Let's add a text box and then we can change the background. You know what? Actually, hold on. I think I could do that with a spacer. I just didn't notice it. Add a spacer. Oh yeah. Upload an image and I'll upload a background image. And one of the things that I created earlier uh, with the banners, I did a graphic banner. I did a little footer here. That looks like this, just a simple footer. And I'm going to add that in there. And that doesn't look right right now, right? Uh, but one of the things I can do, two things I need to do with this, you'll notice here there's this little star icon, remove readability for uh, adjustment. I don't need that because there's no, no text that's going to be on it. But I can also change the anchoring. And the anchoring prioritizes what edge of the image do you want to be shown when it rescales for responsiveness. So I wanted to prioritize the top of the image and you'll see there it kind of moves uh, everything down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to make this larger. And again, I'm getting a little technical here because I'm geeking out on this to make it look cool. Let's even make it a little bit bigger than that. I don't want it to be too big actually. I can just make it like, like that. I like that. Now let's preview and see what that looks like. Okay, so we have all this and then we come down to our footer I don't know why my things disappeared, but we can see our logo there. Did I accidentally delete our um, our social things? I probably deleted it. Well, gosh darn it. Let me re-add those. Copy my Twitter. Put that in there. Copy LinkedIn. Put that in there. If Sarah James really had a social media presence, I would add that in there. But she does not. And what do we want to do? Let's make them large and colored and centered. And there we go. Now let's preview it. All right, perfect. What's great about this is now this logo, this, this, all of this will always show up on um, every page that I design. I don't have to recreate that each individual page. And we have that cool footer there. Why? I don't know, because it looks cool. Good enough for me. Okay, so now we're done with our footer. We can click out of that 
and now we've edited the footer. And like I said, I don't have to do that anymore. Okay. Gosh, we spent a lot of time on that front page. We're done with our front page. Um, but we also accomplished quite a bit, Like right? We established the look and feel. We established the fonts and the colors and the images. And we established, really, what will ultimately be easily repeatable elements that we can reuse when we create our other pages. We don't need to redesign everything from scratch. And we don't want to do that because that would be a huge waste of time, right? So now let's add our second page, right? So we have our home page. Now let's add an About Me page, right? So I'm going to go to my Pages tab here. We have our home page. And I'm going to add a new page. And this page is going to be About Me. We're done. And um, you know what? Actually, I'm going to delete this page. Instead of creating a page from scratch, I'm going to duplicate the home page. This will actually be easier. Because now I can reuse some of those elements from our home page. Oh, not above. About Me. There we go. Done. Now I have a duplicate of my home page and I can reuse these. So uh, what do we want to have for our about page? So let me go down here. The headline is going to be about me and the subheading is going to be learn what makes me special. Great. Let's do that. About me. Learn what makes me special. We will do that. And, you know, on the front page, and you'll notice it added it up here to the menu, right? So now we have our menu uh, being generated because we have more than one page. Uh, one thing that we did on the front page that I don't want to do on my subsequent pages is have that full page cover image, right? So if I preview it here now, you'll see the about me is taking up the whole page. I, I think that's appropriate on the home page, but I don't know if I want to do that on all of my subsequent pages. So I'm actually going to choose to do a smaller banner on my sub pages, if you will. And so I'm going to change the header type to be the large banner. And I'm also going to change out this image here. Uh, oops, large banner. And then I'm going to change the image. And I have another version of this as well. I have, uh, this is the one I use on the front page. And then I have a smaller one here uh, for subsequent pages. And, you know, I don't know if there's a right aspect ratio or pixel size for all these images. It's something you kind of have to play around with to figure out uh, what works. Um, so I'll open this and this one will work well for that. So let's preview this. So if we go to our home page, that's what this looks like. Go to About Me, and it's a little bit smaller. Um, it doesn't need to be that big full screen, and it looks equally as uh, pleasing, right? All right, let's close out the preview. Let's build out the rest of this About Me page. So what do we have here? So we have, we did the Hero section. What about the About section? So we want to have a subheading from Teacher to Instructional Designer. I love helping people learn. We have some body content and some calls to action. So we're going to keep this pretty simple. So here, I don't need this heading here. I think I'm going to get rid of that. I don't need two spacers here, so I'll get rid of that. And then we'll start changing out this text here. So from teacher to instructional designer, I love helping people learn. Great. We'll put that here. And then we have the bio here. I'll take a look at that once we paste that over. Did I really type instructional wrong? I probably did. Let me fix this first. Mm, instructional. There we go. And then maybe for this, this led me to leaving the classroom and pursuing a new career. So I'm always worried about my typos. I'm awful at typos. Make that a subheading. Make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so when I decided to become a teacher over 10 years ago, I had a little idea where it would take me. I learned that I love teaching and that I love my students, but I also learned that I loved creating training materials even more. This led me to leaving the classroom and pursuing a new career in e-learning and instructional design. Using everything I've learned over the last decade, I'm now looking for work as an instructional designer so that I can help organizations create best-in-class learning experiences. Again, like, I'm ready to hire this person ASAP. She's being honest and telling me her story in an authentic way. That's a good thing, right? Um, let's also swap out this image here. So let's do replace image. We'll upload a new one. Oops. And again, using a couple different images here. Let me go back to our photos. Uh, I don't know what we did on the previous page. I think we did that one. Let's do this one for working. Again, some variety if we're able to. And what about our buttons here? What do we want to do for our buttons? We want two buttons. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Download my resume. Let's do that. And I don't have a link, 
because she doesn't have actually have a LinkedIn profile. And let's insert another button down, download my resume. And I don't have a link for that either. So we'll just make it a pretend one. And I'm gonna move that up here as well. And oops, it's going everywhere. Put it there. Let's change the style of it. We'll do an outlined load. Just, you know, creates prioritization, hierarchy between what button's more important than the other one. Learn about more about me. That's not what I said. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Did I type that and I thought I was typing something else? I have no idea. There we go. Um, now, one thing I want to mention about this too, this is another mistake people often make when they're designing their portfolio. I, I am so not a big fan of when people upload and display an embedded version of their resume. It just never looks right. It's hard to understand where the website ends and the resume begins, and then it doesn't scale well. Just give people a link to download it. Put it on Google Drive, add a link to it, and download it. Don't, don't try to embed it. It's just never going to look right, all right? Okay, I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. Again, this was just a, a copy of our homepage, so there's all those elements there. And then we have our footer there, so we're good. And let's preview it. Okay, there's about me, a little bit more, connect to LinkedIn, download my resume, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this might be where somebody wants to add a contact form. One of the things that you can do in Google Sites, which I'm not exactly a fan of, is you can add a Google form and embed a Google form, which you could kind of make a contact form out of it, but it doesn't really work well, in my opinion. And so, you know, if you wanted to add your email address, you could add that here or have them connect with you on LinkedIn. You don't necessarily need a contact form. Connect with me on LinkedIn might be just sufficient or at least, you know, type out your email address if somebody wants to email you. But if you really do want a form, you can embed uh, a Google form um, that you create and embed there. I don't have one, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so I'm going to go back to previewing here. And I'm thinking about, there's something I want to change here. Um, you know, most websites always have this navigation bar across the top, and that's fine. But there are different options available to us in Google Sites. We can do different things. And, you know, I, I, somebody asked me this earlier uh, about whether or not hiring managers um, how they feel about Google Sites. And somebody asked me, they said, oh, they heard this advice that Google Sites, um, hiring managers don't like hiring people who use Google Sites because hiring managers think Google Sites are unprofessional. And mm, I don't necessarily agree with that because I used to be a hiring manager, but hiring managers don't think Google Sites are unprofessional. Hiring managers just think unprofessional looking sites, regardless of the tool they're created in, are unprofessional. And so, you know, as we're building this out here, obviously it's a Google site. You can figure that out by clicking on this little icon. All Google Sites have this icon down here, but it's not about the tool you use, it's how you use it. And one of the things that uh, I'm always looking for are ways that we can make things, you know, take things outside the box and make them look a little bit more unique than they would if we just use the default settings. So one of the things that I want to do, the reason I say all of that, is I want to change the style of our menu here. Um, if I click on the settings icon up here for the navigation, it's going to bring up our site settings. We'll look more about, look more into this a little bit later, but you'll notice there's an option here for navigation. And we have a couple different options. We have top navigation or side navigation. I'm going to select side navigation. And you're going to notice here that I got rid of the menu up here and added what's called a hamburger menu here. Now, if we preview this, it's going to make our website look like this. It's going to add the menu here. And I like that. It's a unique, unexpected look to our website, right? It doesn't look like every other Google site that you've ever seen before. Um, and you'll notice that it, it looks great on uh, whatever uh, device you add uh, or you preview it as or preview it in. And it, you know, has this fun little animation and it just makes it look just a bit more custom than the default setting. So I'm going to go with that sidebar menu. And you'll see that as we add more pages, it will continue adding to that. Okay, created a homepage. We've created an About Me page. Let's link to our About Me page from the homepage here, so learn more about me. Let's edit that before I forget. We'll go to About Me, great. Now, let's create the actual portfolio page, right? The 
portfolio part of creating our portfolio website. So I'm going to go to my pages tab here. We created about me. I'm going to duplicate this and then reuse all of that for our portfolio page. Again, not creating anything from scratch if I don't have to. So I'm going to duplicate the page and call this portfolio. Click done. And now we have a portfolio page here. And let's go to our little document here. So we have portfolio. Check out some of my recent work. So let's add that here. And I can't help but to feel, you know, as I'm creating, as I'm working with this, because I kind of, I'm going to keep using the word storyboarded, all the content for the portfolio. It's no different than creating a storyboard for an e-learning course. If you spend a lot of time storyboarding your, your course out, it makes development so much easier. Same thing is true here, right? We I storyboarded out all of the content for my portfolio, and now as we're building it, it's making it that much easier. I'm just putting it in and designing it. So here's our portfolio page. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can go about structuring your portfolio page. Um, some people like to put all of the details of all of their items on their portfolio on one page. Other people like to make the portfolio page kind of like a menu uh, to link to subsequent pages. And I think it's just a matter of preference and how much content and detail you have to share. So let me give you a couple of different examples here. Um, let's, I think it's Sarah Anderson's is a good example right here. Like, so this one, Sarah Anderson's, which I showed you earlier, she has all of her portfolio images, content on one page, right? So we have the image, we have some buttons, we have all the content, uh, details of that portfolio item. All of this lives on one page. And then we click here and they would link off to the course so we can view it. My portfolio, if I go to that and go up here to portfolio, my portfolio acts as sort of like a menu, right? So I have a section for custom e-learning development with portfolio items, and then I can click and dive into each one to learn more about each one individually. That's my preference, but it's really up to you. It depends on how many portfolio items you have to share and all of that good stuff. So we're gonna design something that looks a little bit more like mine with the menu, and then we'll design and develop an individual uh, portfolio page from that point, all right? So let's jump back to Google Sites. Let me minimize this. And uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use um, this type of content block where there's two images with some text. So I actually don't need everything here, but I'm not going to delete it. Yeah, I'm just going to delete it. I don't need any of it, actually. Delete. And that got rid of everything. So let's add this in. Move it up here between my spacers. And I don't need the text down here. I don't need the text down here, but I will add buttons there. So we're going to add images and the titles of the project, and then we're going to add buttons to learn more. So I'll add an image here, upload an image. And I've already built out some portfolio samples here. These are actually samples of my own work. Um, and we're going to start with our thumbnail here. And as I upload this, one of the things I want you to notice is that um, I present my screenshots or the images of my portfolio as a mock-up. This is what a mock-up is. This is where you take a screenshot of whatever it is you're sharing and you superimpose it on a computer or a tablet. And it takes what would otherwise be a relatively boring screenshot and it makes it look much more interesting and lively as a mock-up. And there's tons of different ways that you can create mock-ups. I'll put a link up above and down below on how you can create mock-ups. Um, you can create them in Canva and in Photoshop and there's other online tools, but it takes, like I said, what would be an otherwise boring screenshot and it makes it that much more interesting, all right? And so let's add the next one here. I have thumbnails for all of my little portfolio items here. Put that one in there. And this one's called, uh, I think this is called uh, Dealing with Angry Customers. This one's How to Greet Our Customers. And I'm just putting the titles of the project there. Let's add some buttons here. And we'll say uh, Check It Out because we want the, you know, the to call to action to be Check Out That Portfolio Item. I don't have a link yet, so I'll just put the word link. And I'm going to move that up here so it's underneath it. And then let's add another button. Check it out. Link. Insert. And I'll throw that up here. And then we'll just duplicate this. So 
I'll duplicate it because I'm going to have some more. I'll put the little spacer up there. Swap out this image for our third portfolio item. Again, I just created a series of mock-ups for all of these different little portfolio items. We're only going to build out one portfolio item. And it would just be rinsing and repeating it for the other ones. This one's called Do the Right Thing. That was the name of that project. And this one was called Introduction to Accounting. There we go. And then I think we always have the spacer at the bottom too. So I'm going to move that and put that down here. All right. That is the portfolio page, the main portfolio page. That was pretty simple, right? Let's preview it, see what it looks like. And it doesn't have to be complicated. And the nice thing about this is that once you've created this, you have something that's easily scalable. And what I mean by that is as you add additional portfolio items, you're just duplicating these and adding more items to it, right? And uh, one of the things I want to mention here too is um, when, when it comes to building out your portfolio, and when I say that, I'm meaning your collection of samples of work. Uh, what I mean by that is, um, or the thing that's super important to remember about that is it's always about quality over quantity. So don't allow yourself to get too wrapped up in, do I need to have four examples or five examples? Even if you only have one or two examples, that's enough to start building a collection of work and sharing it, all right? So in this example, I have four, just because that's a nice, easy number and it looks clean when it's laid out. But if all you have is one example, then start with one example and then build a second example. Then you have two and then eventually three and four, right? Um, but don't, don't obsess too much about quantity. It's about quality. And most hiring managers, just a quick bit of advice, most hiring managers are looking at dozens of portfolios. And so they're only going to spend a couple minutes on yours, uh, on anyone's portfolio. So uh, make sure it's a couple of examples that demonstrate your best work. Okay. Okay. So we built out the portfolio page. Um, is it in our menu? I didn't see if it was in the menu. Yeah, here it is in our menu. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually build out the detailed uh, page for this one portfolio item, dealing with angry customers. And I want to talk a little bit about the different elements you might want to include in the details or the write-up of a given portfolio item. Um, but to do that, we're going to go back to our pages and we're going to duplicate this page to create that. And this one's going to be called, what is it going to be called? Hold on. Dealing with angry customers. Let me rename that there. Perfect. And I want this to be a sub page of my portfolio. So if I preview it here, you're going to notice that it's listed as if it's own its own page. I don't want that. I want it to be a sub page of the portfolio. So if I click on this and drag it on top of portfolio, you'll see it kind of indents it there. And now if I preview it, you'll see it's indented there and I can click and expand that. I could hide it from the menu if I wanted to, but I kind of like it being shown there. So as I add additional portfolio items, they would all be listed there. All right. So let's go uh, edit out uh, the page for this one portfolio item dealing with angry customers. So I don't need these blocks. I'm going to delete those. Don't need that. We'll leave those spacers in there because I'll use them. And for our hero section for our managing difficult customers, uh, managing difficult customers, and then we're going to put subheading just portfolio. Um, we'll do it. We'll keep it consistent because it's dealing with angry customers is what I called it here. All right, and we'll say um, portfolio, just something as a headline. If I wanted something more detailed, I could do that. Now, everything we do from this point forward, what level of detail you go into about a given project or portfolio item is really up to you. And so here's my guidance. You have to ask yourself, what is it that you're wanting to be hired for? And what do you want hiring managers to know about your skills? Let me give you a really great example. Uh, if we go look at my portfolio, here's an example of my portfolio. I actually don't write out a lot of details about the project. I have some uh, short paragraph. I actually have a video here. This is just a short video reel of the project that I illustrate the look and feel of it, the technical functionality. I have some details about the, con the, the project, the tools, the skills, and I have screenshots. The reason why my portfolio looks that way, and I don't have a long write-up about how I storyboarded it and how I developed it and the needs analysis and all that stuff, 
Because those are the things I'm looking to get hired for. I'm looking to get hired for uh, or hired by clients that want somebody who can create visually engaging, highly interactive courses and storyline and rise. And so I focus on the visual and the technical aspects of my courses. Whereas, you know, if we go here and we look at Lindsay's, she has more of a write-up about her portfolio, right? Or if we go look at Sarah's, she's talking about the problem and the goal and the solution. So it's totally up to you to what level of detail you want to go into when outlining the details of a portfolio. Um, so ask yourself, what is it that I want a hiring manager to know about me? If you're wanting to be hired for your instructional design abilities, then that's what you want to detail in your portfolio. If you want to be hired for technical stuff, you want to figure out how to highlight those elements. So what we're going to do today is we're going to pretend that our uh, fake instructional designer here, Sarah James, she's looking to get hired as an instructional designer, and she wants to get hired for her technical or her uh, instructional design abilities and her development abilities. So we're going to do a little bit of everything. All right, but you can adapt this, mix and match it to fit your needs. You don't have to do exactly as I'm doing here. Use this as a springboard to make it your own, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do an image with some text with some of the initial details about the project here. And let me put that up here. And we have that screenshot, that um, mock-up on the portfolio page. I wanna have a version of that here, because again, I wanna be able to send a link directly to this page and I want people to be able to see it. So let's upload an image here. And I have a square thumbnail. I'm gonna go with the square one. This was the main one that I used on the portfolio page. We're gonna put this one here. And I'm gonna make sure it's uncropped like that. I like that. And then let's start adding details to it here. So um, we did the hero section. So the subheading, learn how to apply practical strategies to deescalate angry customers. That's what this course is all about, right? Um, that's the goal of it. So I'm gonna put that in there. So that's right front and center. And I'm gonna make it a subheading like that, or what is a heading like that? Yeah, I like the heading like that. And then let's add the content here. And so this is just a quick couple of paragraphs about what this project was about, what it accomplished. So customer service agents need to be equipped to handle a wide variety of situations and interactions. When a customer calls, agents never know what problems or questions the customer might throw their way. This course is designed to help customer service agents learn how to de-escalate an angry customer. I designed the scenario-based e-learning course and articulate storyline to demonstrate how branching scenarios can be used to simulate a customer interaction. Now, one of the things that I think is important is, um, I'll make that a little subheading. And before I say what I must say, I realized I chose the wrong image here. Let's choose the right image. Portfolio item one. Where's my square one? There's my square one. There we go. Okay. Um, you know, it's okay if you're developing sample projects, demo projects, it's okay to say that. Be upfront and honest. It's a sample project that I designed in the hopes of accomplishing X, Y, and Z, right? Don't try to make it sound like it was a real project that you delivered to learners if it wasn't a real project. Be upfront and honest. Um, you know, my portfolio has several examples that are just demo projects. You know, um, if I go back here to my main portfolio page, you know, these two are both demo projects. It's totally fine if it's demo projects. Not everything has to be a real project. And it's okay to say in the details of it that it's not a real project, okay? One last thing I wanna add here is a call to action. I wanna have a button here for the learner, for the viewer to go actually view the portfolio item. Uh, so let me add a button here. And I'm gonna say, check, uh, let's do view, view the finished project, all right? And I'll get a link for this here in a moment. I'll click insert. And I'll put some, uh, I'll put a link down in the description where you can find information on this about where you can host your projects. One of the drawbacks with Google Sites is that you can't actually host your sample projects on Google Sites on the back end. So you have to figure out where you're going to host the finished projects. Now, if you're like me, what I like to do is I have a license to Articulate 360. It's something that I encourage people to invest in if they're really, really serious about uh, becoming an e-learning designer and using Storyline. So if you're able to invest in it, by all means, please do. What I do is I host all of my work directly in Articulate Review. Um, and what I do is I just share a link directly out of Articulate Review. I turn off the comments, so I disable the comments. And so I can send that link to anybody and then you view the project, right? That's the easiest way. So I can come in here, put a link to Articulate Review, and it's hosted there. 
right? But if you don't have Articulate Review, you can host your projects on Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud. And like I said, I'll put a link down in the description where I'll provide links for how to do all of that. And you can do that for um, free if you don't have a license to Articulate 360. Or you can do like what I did here on my portfolio, um, you know, do a video demonstration of, of, of the project if you want to, right? You don't necessarily have to link to the finished version. Uh, you, there, you can do screenshots, videos, uh, whatever, you know, think best illustrates your skills. Okay. All right. So we have the image, we have some details about it. We have a link to it. What do we want to do next? Well, the next thing I want to do is I kind of want to replicate what I, what I actually have on my real portfolio is this, right? The details, the tools, the skills. I want to give some at a glance information about uh, this portfolio item. And the reason why you want to do this is not only does it help somebody understand what skills and tools you use, but all of these things are really, really good keywords. Uh, because what Google does is when Google indexes your website, it's picking up all the different texts and words and it's linking them together. And so eventually, you know, when people type in custom e-learning development, what do they get? Well, if you look here, uh, there I am. I'm on the front page for custom e-learning development, right? Um, so that stuff matters, what information you use. And so the more you can use and add details, the, the better it'll help Google understand who you are. So here's what I'm going to do. I am just going to add this um, content block here, the three blocks here with the images and the text. And let me move it up here. And uh, I don't need the images, so let me delete these images. I'm not going to use those. But I'm going to use the text here. And if we go to our little Word document here, we have details. So it's going to be um, details, tools, and skills. Let me type that in here. Details, tools, and skills. And so for the details, we have what type of project it was, custom e-learning development client. It was a demo project. The date, November 2022. I'm going to paste that in here. Let me fix some of these bullet points. Those do not look right. And I'll add some bullet points there. There we go. And I'm just going to copy these over here. And it'll make it easier to copy this stuff from here. So Articulate Storyline, PowerPoint. I'm actually just going to type it. So what tools I use, Articulate Storyline. Use the PowerPoint for the graphics. So I'll put that in there. And then we have what skills do we use? These are just some keywords, storyboarding, graphic design, e-learning development. What if we just did actually, we'll do instructional design, storyboarding, e-learning development. There we go. I like that. So there's the details. Let's preview it real quickly. Okay. That's looking good so far. Okay, what do we want to do next? Well, if you wanted to, this is where we start telling the story, the write-up of how the project went, what your process looks like. This is something that, depending on what type of role you're applying for, if you're applying for an instructional design role, uh, hiring managers want to know what your process was. And this is especially true if you're looking to become an instructional designer, focused on instructional design. But even if you're wanting to get focused on e-learning development, it, it can't hurt to outline what your process was. Because what hiring managers are trying to evaluate is, you know, do you understand what it is that you're doing? And do you have a process for going about and doing it, right? And so this is where we can do it. Um, so I'm going to add some text here. I'm going to add a text box here. And I'm going to say um, the design process. And we're going to set this as a heading. We'll center it. We're going to move our little spacer there. Let's duplicate the spacer, add another one below it. Again, just for consistency's sake from everything else we've been developing. And this is where we're going to outline, you know, different parts of the development process. Now, in this case, I didn't conduct a needs analysis because it was a demo project. So I'm not going to talk about that, but I did talk about how, or I, I am going to talk about how I created my outline, how I did the storyboard, how I did the development. So I'm going to try and include some details and some visual artifacts to illustrate that. And to do that, what I'm going to do is just use the simple uh, image on the left, content on the right block, just like this. And if we go here to our document, the design process, so we have, 
initial design with some content, storyboarding, development. So let's start with initial design. I'm gonna copy this. Paste that in there. We'll call this initial design. And did I not spell in this right? Nope, I always forget that I. There we go. And let's do it as a heading. And so the initial design of this project started as a rough outline, which I created in Miro. Because I knew designing a branching scenario would be complex, I created this outline to visualize the flow of the total learner experience, including each decision point, the correct incorrect feedback, and the potential outcomes, right? So I'm explaining why did I use Miro? What did it help me do in designing this? And this is where I'm going to upload an image. So I'm going to upload an image, and I just took a screenshot of um, the initial design in Miro. I'll throw that in there. And of course, um, you know, whoever's viewing this, they can't necessarily read all that detail. It, it's not really about that. It's just about showing parts of my design process, okay, and talking about it. And again, it adds a little bit of visual flavor to have the image there. So let's duplicate this. So we did an initial design. I'm going to move this image now over here to the right. So we have a little bit of a back and forth uh, going on here. And this one's going to be for storyboarding. Talk about what we did there. And uh, we'll copy this. All right, so after creating a high-level outline in Miro, I transitioned into drafting a written storyboard to outline each decision point, the agent customer conversations, along with the scenario options and feedback. Okay, good, that makes sense. I'll replace the image here. I have an image of the storyboard. I took a screenshot of that from Microsoft Word. Throw that in there. Show it, okay? And then we have one more uh, section for development. So I'm going to duplicate that first one and move it down here. And it is development. And copy that. Paste it in here. Call this development. And finally, given the complexity of the branching scenario I storyboarded, I decided to develop the course, develop the course and articulate storyline. I source created and edited all the graphics. Uh, and stock images and shapes available in PowerPoint. All right, place this image. Development, there we go. There's my picture from Storyline. And there we go. I have a quick little three paragraph write up of what my design process looked like. I'm just telling it as it is exactly how I did it. So we have a lot of content here, right? We have the image, talk a little bit about the project. There's a link to view the finished project. I can open that. Again, here it is in Articulate Review, so somebody could come in here and look at it. That's cool. Details about uh, how I built it. Then we have the design process, back and forth, back and forth. And I think we want to add one more section here at the bottom for the, um, you know, I'm going to get rid of the spacer. I feel like there was too much space there. Uh, we're going to add one more section at the bottom for the finished project where we can add some screenshots. Let me add a couple more spacers in here and add one more. Actually, I need to add three of them because I want to have a spacer up here above this one, spacer below it, and then we'll add our images in here. So we're going to do, in this case, we're going to do image carousel. This is where we can add like a gallery of images. So I'm going to come in here, upload some images. This is just some screenshots of the course. I have four of them here. So I'm going to upload those, insert those there. And let's make it a little bit larger here. Actually, you know what? We need to rearrange those. We're going to do this one first. We will do this one second. Nope, not add text. There we go. Oh, let's try it again. There we go. Second, third, and fourth. There we go. And let's resize it so it kind of looks nice and big there and takes up the whole screen area. Good. Let's move our header on top. All right, and there's our little gallery of images. And let's move that spacer there because that got put down there. All right, let's preview it. So dealing with angry customers. We have our details, information, the design process, the finished project with our little gallery of images that people can click through. There we go. Good. And of course, if I wanted to add another button down here for them to view the project, I could do that. And there's our footer. So there's our portfolio page. Now, what's great about this 
is now that I've created this portfolio page, if I wanted to build out the other four portfolio pages or future portfolio pages, I can duplicate it and the theme here, rinse and repeat. Don't create these things from scratch. Once you've spent a lot of time creating one, then you can just keep recreating them and swapping out the information, all right? That's how easy it is. So let's preview the whole thing here. Let's go to our home page here. Here's our home page. Learn more about me. This would go to the about page. What do I do? Check out my work. We got to add the link there. Here's our footer. Let's go to the about me page. Yup, there you can see the favicon showing up now. I don't know why it's not showing up there. It probably will once we publish it. Check me out on LinkedIn. Connect with me or download my resume. I don't have anything there. It's a simple about me page. Go to the portfolio page. There's all of our samples. And then we need to link that one here. So let's do that real quickly before we finish up here. Close out of the preview here. And let's go to, let's link here to the portfolio. Check out my work. Portfolio, good, update that. Let's go to the portfolio page. Update the link here to the dealing with angry customers. There we go. And of course I don't have links here uh, to link to. All right, so we're done. We've built out this whole portfolio, um, the home page, about me page, the portfolio page, the individual portfolio page. Now let's talk quickly about publishing it and then I wanna close with some final words about building your website in Google Sites. So there's a couple different options you have for publishing. If I click to publish here, what it's going to do is it's going to publish it to Google Sites and you can give it a web address here, but it's not like your, it's gonna be sarahjames.com. Uh, it's going to be, you know, it could be, Sarah James, right? And then it publishes it to Google Sites. I can hit publish right now, and it's going to give me a link. And I'll put a link down below where you can actually see this. And it's sites.google.com slash view Sarah James portfolio, or the homepage at least, right? Um, you'll notice I can't see it right there right now. Uh, I can fix that here in a moment. But you can you can publish it to Google Sites and you have this link and you can share that with anybody and they can view it, right? It's not gonna be sarahjames.com, but at least it's a link and you don't have to spend any money to do that, which is fantastic. One thing, if you do publish it out and you just publish it to Google Sites, you do need to adjust the sharing settings. There's this little person icon with the plus sign. You do have to come in here and publish site. You wanna make sure it's set to public, right? Not just you, but public. So anyone can see it. Okay. Uh, so you can do that. One thing I would encourage you to do though, um, is instead of just linking to, um, you know, from Google sites, it can add an additional layer of credibility and professionalism if you do purchase your own domain. So one of the great things that you can do is if you come into your published settings here in Google Sites, you'll have an option here for custom domains and you can manage your custom domains here and you can actually go in and purchase a domain directly through Google Domains and link it here. So if you wanted to buy, you know, in this case, sarahjames.com or if your name's available as a .com, you can buy it there. And typically these domains are less than 20 bucks. Sometimes they're down to like two bucks. They can be really cheap and they cost you about 20 bucks a year to maintain the registration for it. And it's a great way to just own your brand and link your portfolio to a domain. And one thing I'll mention too, is if you buy your domain on Google domains and you connect your Google site to it, that does not mean that later you can't connect that domain to a different website, even if it's through Google domains. If you went and built a website with WordPress or with Squarespace or Weebly or Webflow, you can still connect that domain to wherever you build a website at later in the future. It's not ex mutually exclusive with Google Sites. The domain and the website are two separate things, okay? This just makes it easy because it does it all in one, but once you own the domain, you can use it however you want in the future. It's not restricted to just being on um, Google Sites. And I'll include a link above or down below on some additional tips I have for uh, picking a domain, all right? Okay, so that is how you build a portfolio website in Google Sites, all right? A couple things I wanna really emphasize here. Uh, as I mentioned at the start of the video or at the start of today's how-to workshop, having a portfolio and having a portfolio website aren't the same thing. A portfolio is a collection of work that you can share with people. A portfolio website is simply the delivery medium for showing people your portfolio samples and your portfolio, all right? 
So depending on where you're at in your uh, either transitioning in this industry or working on building your skills or your portfolio, uh, if you don't have samples of work to share yet, don't start building a portfolio website until you have samples of work to share. Once you have one or two really good examples that you're happy with, that you're ready to share, then it's time to start building your portfolio website. And if you've never built a website before, Google Sites is a great place to start. What's important is that you find a way to tell your story in an authentic way, tell people who you are, be upfront and honest, do it in an interesting way that's authentic and vulnerable. Make it look and feel like you and make it consistent and stylized. Don't go with just one of the templates. Pick your own colors, pick some fonts, spend some time establishing a look and feel. Remember, this is going to be like the storefront from your brand. And it might be the first thing that a hiring manager or a client sees from you. All right. And keep it consistent. Be consistent AF, as I said earlier. So as we go through this, you know, I, I'm not getting overly creative with headings and the layouts. I'm keeping it simple and consistent. It doesn't need to be crazy and overly contrived or overly designed. Just keep it simple. All right. So that is how to build your e-learning and instructional design portfolio in Google Sites. I know we covered so much, and this was a longer than normal how-to workshop, um, but I, I hope it gives you tips to start um, building your own website, all right? So if you do happen to build your own portfolio website in Google Sites, all I ask you to do is down below, share a link to it once you're ready to share it, because I know I would love to see it, and I know others would love to see it, all right? Thank you so much for watching. As I mentioned at the top of today's video, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and that bell button so that you'll get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, join us inside the eLearning Designers community. It's free at community.elearningacademy.io, and it's a great place to connect, network, and learn with others who are also learning and working to build their eLearning skills and portfolios, all right? Otherwise, my name is Tim Slade. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you around.